All right, so this is the simplest time dependent circuit you can solve for. But you know, it's uh, kind of simple. It's a very special case scenario. What I find is uh, simpler to do in lab is actually the other scenario, the scenario number two. So, uh, so let's go through scenario number two. I will do this as the uh, modification of this. I'll try to set up things so that um, it's modified properly. Um, so let me do it this way. I want to set it up so that um, so um, the current actually, when I hook up this uh, battery, the uh, current actually now goes clockwise. So this clockwise current is going to be charging up the capacitor. So, um, so we don't have this anymore. Let me erase it so that it's not confusing anyone. So when this uh, switch closes over to A side, now what you're going to have is you're going to have current flowing clockwise. So this will be the direction of current and the loop that we are going to use. Yep. Um, and hmm, how do I not put it? Uh, let me do this the, hmm. yeah, so let me say that the amount of charge on the capacitor is going to be plus Q of T and minus Q of T. And I'll say, to make things simpler, at time equals zero, the Q of T is zero, that it starts out uncharged. And at time equals zero, I'm charging it. So, all right. Does the way I, direction I label the plus and the negative charge make sense? If it starts out from zero charge, as current comes in, you are going to have positive charges accumulating here. So the way I labeled it makes sense. Um, all right, so I think I have all the diagrams. Let me write down the sum of all the voltages. So actually, I guess I, let me start my loop here. That makes it easier to use what I already have there. And so this time, my loop is actually going from positive to negative side of the capacitor. So instead of plus Q of T, this is going to be minus Q of T. Um, my, oh, this is still minus IR. Why do I not have to change the sign of the, this term? Yeah, I'm, so with the register, what matters is the direction of current. And I'm still going with the current. So it's still minus IR. Let me write down the term that I gain as I go through the battery. Oh, I should have given the voltage, battery of the vo Voltage of the battery is V naught, a constant value. So I'll get plus V naught from here. So plus V naught is equal to zero. All right. Um, so we still have these two unknowns. This is what we wrote down before. Let's just double check that it is still correct. That as positive current flows, uh, my dq dt, is that positive or negative? Is q increasing or decreasing as positive current flows? It's not decreasing. It's increasing from zero to this non-zero value, right? And I oriented it so that it'll charge. So, um, so this time it means this is plus dq dt. Um, so that's why I like to go through this rule, uh, go through this check every single time. Otherwise, there's a chance that you might make a sign error. Um, I haven't found any other way to avoid it either. Yeah. You go through the steps again, you look at the direction the current goes. And so I imagine um, what happens as a positive current flows. If uh, as a positive current flows, if Q of T is decreasing, then I have to have minus sign like I, I did last time. If you find that it should be increasing, then I should have plus sign. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some other thing you can look at to see if your sign conventions are consistent, but this is the easiest way I found. Just make sure your signs come out right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so let's uh, imagine plugging this in. Then um, I get more or less the same equation as last time. It's going to be um, so Q of T over C. Oh, sorry, minus Q of T of over C, uh, still plus, wait, not plus, actually this becomes minus, right? Because uh, I'm putting this in here, so it's minus R times dQ dt, minus R dQ dt, 
And uh, let, I guess I'm just going to erase the rest of the board because at some point I'm not going to be able to reuse what's already on the board, and I need more space. Uh, so let me erase all of this. So I have a third term this time. It's going to be plus v naught is equal to 0. Good. Everyone OK with this differential equation? We get from applying Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirchhoff's rule, rule. OK. So I'm going to do the same thing as last time. I'm going to solve this equation for dq dt. And I can already see that it's going to be significantly different. So let me just uh, erase all of this and uh, just write out what it is now. Um, so it's probably going to be, or it's going to be, so, uh, so move dq dt over to the other side and write that down first. <laughs> dq dt is equal to the other terms remaining on the original side v naught minus 1 over c. And I'm actually going to multiply through by 1 over r also. So it's going to be v naught over r minus 1 over rc uh, q. Everything good? OK. Um, all right, so I'm going to separate variable, variables again. So. On the right-hand side here, I have a term that depends on q, no dependence on time. So I want to do the same thing as last time. Collect all the q terms on the left-hand side and all the dt time terms on the right-hand side. So how do you get this term to the left-hand side? I guess it's essentially a choice of, um, um, this is a choice before you. Do you add on both sides by plus q over rc? Or do you do something else? Like, if you did this, will this work? If you did on both sides, plus q over rc, plus q over rc, will that work? The answer is no. It's because doing it this way, you have no way to separate dt from dq. Like, after this, imagine multiplying both sides by dt then you are going to be left with a crummy dt term here where you want you to get rid of it. And um, if you, but now this is tied with the q, so you can't move it back either. So here, really the only way you can separate q and t is actually the exact same thing that you did the last time. You have to divide both sides. And this time, um, I'm going to divide both sides by uh, let me do it this way. This is the version I like. Um, I'm going to divide the both, both sides by um, 1 over C V naught minus Q. So times 1 over C V naught minus Q. There's a reason I'm doing it that way. So to simplify it, I should uh, simplify this, write it as um, multiply top and bottom by C. So this is CV naught minus Q neatly cancels this. And on the right hand side, I'm just left with 1 over RC. Um, on the left hand side, I'm left with whatever. And I'm also going to move DT over to the other side. So let me write down the simplified version where all of that has been done. So this is the simplified version where all of that has been done. So this is the step that we would call separation of variables. Then you have on the left hand side, dq over c v naught minus q. Okay. On the right hand side, we have one for the, or we have dt for the numerator. So it's dt over, ah, I did something wrong. I'll fix it. Um, so I have dt over rc, but I actually don't like that. Uh, I guess I could leave it that way. Mm. 
No, I, I'm going to um, put it in a format that's going to make it, uh, put it in a format that it's eventually going to be anyway. So you know, these little tiny uh, fixes I'm making, if you don't do it, it doesn't matter. Eventually you are going to, your final answer is going to have the same form either way. I just want my current answer here to reflect what it's going to be in the end. So, so this is what I get directly out of this. And what I feel like I'm missing is I feel like this side should have a minus sign. So the way I'm going to get that to have minus sign is I'm going to multiply through by minus one. When I do that, I get this minus sign that I want you to see. And the denominator here becomes plus Q minus a CV naught. That's something neurotic I'm doing. That, any questions? So, so far here, you know, nothing looks all that um, unusual, right? Yes? No? Good? Yeah? Uh, I just want you to see it that way. I, I, so I, I don't have a good reason other than that's what I feel, find natural. <laughs> if you don't do this step, that's actually fine. Uh, if you go through all the steps that I'm doing from here on, you will eventually find that um, the minus sign shows up again so that your final answer for Q of T ends up being the same no matter what you do. I just like this way better. Okay, I guess here's one way I can justify it. I kind of want to see plus sign here in front of Q. That'll make it my next step actually easy. So I have the variables separated, right? Everything on the left-hand side depends only on Q. Everything on the right-hand side depends only on T. Not the, or, you know, it's constant. It doesn't, but the important thing is that it does not depend on Q. So what that means is we can do the exact same thing we did last time. We can integrate left-hand side and the right-hand side. Let me do it as a definite integral again. So the right-hand side integral goes from t is equal to 0 to some value t final. Left-hand side integral goes from q is equal to, what was my initial value of q? Zero. Yeah, this time it's a 0. So it goes from q is equal to 0 to some final value q final. Who knows what that is? We are trying to find it. So we do the integral and we go through all that. And uh, let me do the next step in a way that most of you didn't do it that way during lab. So this is how I'm going to do the next step. Um, so most of you in the lab, you did a U substitution to do this integral, right? Is that what most people here did? Okay, I'm not going to do U substitution. I'm just going to guess and check. I'm going to guess that my antiderivative of this is natural log of Q minus CV naught. Does it? It feels like the right answer. So the, the way you check it is you plug it, you take the derivative of it. Do you get this back? Right? You get 1 over this uh, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. That's kind of why I wanted this plus sign here. <laughs> Makes it easier to guess. So yeah, this is actually correct antiderivative, which means I can do this. I can say it's a natural log of Q minus a CV naught evaluated from Q is equal to 0 to Q final. Um, turns out this is actually the simplest thing you can do mathematically. Uh, now, it might not make as much sense, especially if you haven't done as many definite integrals as I have. Um, in case you do U substitution, let me show you what you have to do. So if you do the U substitution, where you say U is equal to minus CV naught plus Q, and DU is equal to DQ, then there's one more additional thing you have to do when you are doing definite integrals. You have to take care of the limits. You can't just leave the limits alone. Because there's a reason I always write the limits this way. This is saying q is equal to 0. It doesn't say what u is equal to. So if you are changing your variable of integration, you have to re-express your limits in terms of your new in variable of integration. So you have to plug all those in to say, this should end up saying, you know, so du over u integrated from when q is equal to 0 minus cv naught to when it, q is equal to q final minus cv naught plus q final. So you have to make, remember to do this as well as the rest of the other things. 
That's why I find it easier to simply guess my antiderivative and <laughs> don't do any other substitutions. Yeah. OK, so uh, let's continue. So that was the left-hand side. The right-hand side will be the same as before. It's, uh, uh, I'll just plug in the limits also, actually. Minus TF over RC. Yeah. Um, let me plug in the limit. Then I have natural log of the upper limit, QF minus the CV naught divided by, the, I'm skipping the logarithm algebra step, divided by uh, when Q is equal to 0, so minus the CV naught. Hmm. Did I do something wrong? It'll work out. Um, that's equal to minus the TF over RC. And I'll do the exact same thing I did the last time. I'm going to reinterpret what final means because there's no actual final point. It's, uh, this f was just a reminder to me that, um, um, so wait, uh, so this f was just a reminder to me that it's a, it's a distinct quantity. So I want to just express that as q as a function of time. And this t final is just uh, some time t. All right, so I have to uh, go through a couple more algebra steps to actually finish solving it. So raise both sides uh, by the power of exponential so that the logarithm cancels. So I have Q, uh, so what I have is um, Q of T minus CV naught over minus CV naught is equal to exponential of minus T over RC. Hmm. So we are going to have another exponential decay somewhere, somehow. Um, all right, I have to finish the algebra. Multiply both sides by minus CV naught. So that ends up with Q of T minus CV naught is equal to uh, minus CV naught e to the minus T over RC. Uh, all right, so to finish solving it, move this over to the other side. And I can actually factor out CV naught. Then when I do all of that, this is what you finally end up with. Q of t is equal to uh, CV naught factored out. So I have 1 plus 1 minus this, e to the minus t over rc. I think some of you actually got this in your lab. But in case you didn't, this is the term that you are supposed to end up with. Um, it's not quite as simple as the other one. It's not simple exponential decay. I mean, you know, there is actually an exponential decay here. It just happens to be the thing that's subtracting from one. And if you want to see this on the oscilloscope, it's actually very simple what I have to do. The very simple thing I can do is instead of triggering on the uh, downward slope, I can trigger on the upward slope. Then my definition of time equals zero will change. Yeah. So, so what you have to imagine here is on the uh, left-hand side, there's this portion of the square wave. So at the end of the square wave, I more or less discharge the capacitor. So you're starting out with a zero charge on the capacitor. And this curve here, it's not exponential rise. What it is is flipped over exponential decay, as in your, this flipped over exponential decay, subtracting from this asymptote value of one. So yeah, so that's what you get. Yeah. Good questions, comments. All right. Uh, so that's the RC circuit, and um, so how we approach this circuit will be model for the uh, well, it'll be at least the model for LR circuit, and we'll do LC circuit in an entirely different way. <laughs>